Hello and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. I'm John, and today we're going to talk about the Raspad 3. This kit turns your Raspberry Pi 4 into a tablet. It has a 10.1 inch touchscreen display and built-in battery, which makes it a convenient and portable solution for all kinds of projects, including retro gaming. We'll unbox it, set it up, and try it out with a number of operating systems. Let's get started. Let's briefly talk about the features of the ResPad 3. It has a 10.1 inch touchscreen at 1280 by 800 pixels. The display can be set to extend, mirror, and of course it can rotate from landscape to portrait mode automatically. It has a built-in battery which they state will last up to 5 hours, most likely depending on the amount of I.O. operations and display brightness. It does have built-in speakers, slots for the GPIO and camera, there are three USB 3.0 ports, a full-size HDMI port, and easy access to the microSD, the audio, and Ethernet ports. I'm really interested in checking out the Raspad 3. Some founder had contacted me some time ago asking if I would be interested in reviewing this product. After checking out their website, I was definitely intrigued with the product and agreed to review it. Keep in mind, all opinions are my own, and I will provide you with my honest feedback about what I like and what I dislike about this device. I will say the included documentation is a little bit weak in that it only provides a simple flyer that shows you how to assemble the unit. It was at that point I checked out their website in more detail, and yeah, I mean, it's got a treasure trove of information that'll help you really make good use out of this machine. And we'll be going over some of that information in this video as well. Let's go ahead and get it out of the box. There's the Raspad 3. We'll just set it off to the side and see what all's in the box. We've got, uh, looks like the power brick, and it's using a barrel connector at 15 volts, 2 amps, 30 watts. And here's the power cable for the brick. And <laughs> this was pretty nice. It included a screwdriver, which has a flat head as well as a Phillips head, and it's magnetic too, and has the Raspad logo there. These two pieces are for the SD card and the screen rotation. We'll look at that in a moment. Of course, the fan for keeping your Raspberry Pi 4 cool. And they included the heat sinks, which is very nice. All the cables to plug in the Pi are here. Your USB-C to USB-C cable, a micro HDMI to micro HDMI. And you actually have two of them. One's longer than the other. And you also have this RJ45 Ethernet cable extension. Additionally, you get this USB 3.0 mail-to-mail cable, and don't worry, I'll show you how to hook all this stuff up. It's very easy. Let's go ahead and take the Raspad 3 out of the package. On the left-hand side, you have your LED battery indicator, the brightness and volume controls, as well as your power button, and of course, a micro SD slot, which is easily accessible. On the bottom, there are four ventilation slots. And on the back, you have a location where the GPIO cable can be fed through, which is a very nice touch. You will, of course, also need to pick up the Raspberry Pi 4 separately. It is not included in the package. We'll take a quick look at the ports here. You have your USB ports, 2.0 and 3.0, your Ethernet jack. This is uh, your GPIO header pins, the display port, the camera port. And if we turn it over here, you can see the USB-C input for your power, two micro HDMI ports, your AV jack, and the slot for the micro SD card. Now, let's put it together. To keep the display from getting scuffed up, I'm going to use this packing material that was included in the package. You could use a towel. We'll go ahead and flip it upside down and use this handy dandy Raspad screwdriver and unscrew all five screws. We'll pry it open, which is very easy. On the right hand side, you have the main I.O. board, which all the cables will connect up to this, with the exception of the SD card. Along the back side, you have your battery that's going to be used to power this device. And on the left hand side, you have the button array as well as a slot for your external micro SD card connection. On the left hand side, we have the three buttons as well as the SD card slot. And on the other side, we have the power, the AV jack, a full size HDMI, 
three USB 3.0 ports, which is nice, and of course, Ethernet. I'm going to go ahead and apply the heat sinks to the Raspberry Pi 4. The USB controller, the smaller one, goes on the far right. The middle one is your RAM, and the larger one is your CPU. I want to show you real quick how the SD card adapter plugs in. Basically, you have this ribbon cable, and you just slide the other end into the SD card slot, like so. But it's actually easier if you just install the ribbon cable first, like that, and push down on the black connector, and then just pop it into the Raspberry Pi 4. And next, we'll just go ahead and install the four screws into the Pi, just like so, using our handy-dandy Raspad screwdriver. This little guy is the sensor that handles the screen rotation, so if your screen doesn't rotate, maybe you forgot this step. But you just slide it into the pins, as you see here. At this point, it's simply a matter of plugging everything up. So we'll start out with the RJ45 Ethernet connection, and go ahead and plug that in on both ends. We'll do the same with this USB 3.0 cable. Keep in mind the cable is rather stiff, and you will have to bend it just a little bit to get it to fit in properly. And now we'll plug in the two HDMI cables. We'll start off with the shorter of the two and plug it into the one furthest to the right. And it just slides right in. And then do the same over here on the right hand side. And we'll take the longer of the two micro HDMI connectors and plug it into the port on the far left and plug it into the right hand side. Position all the cables on the other side of this notch. That's very important, otherwise it'll interfere with the screw hole, which you don't want. And the last cable we need to hook up is the USB-C connection for the power. And we'll go ahead and plug that on the right-hand side as well. And again, make sure that your cables are arranged like this, and there's nothing obstructing the screw hole. Now we'll install the fan. You want to place the label side down, and then take the four screws that have kind of a flat-headed ring to it and screw those into the assembly here. Then plug in the other end of the keyed fan connector into the I.O. board. We're just about done with the assembly. We just have to close up the case and then reinstall the five screws. I started with the middle and then worked my way around. In the next segment, we'll turn our attention to the software and operating system setup and configuration. SunFounder includes a pre-made image of Raspad, which we're going to install to a micro SD. But first, I'm going to show you how to get the Raspberry Pi imager. Go to raspberrypi.com forward slash software to download the Raspberry Pi imager. There are a number of operating systems you can use it with. For example, Windows, Mac OS, Ubuntu, and of course the Raspberry Pi itself. In this example, I'm going to download and install the Windows version. Then head on over to raspad.com, pages, raspad-os, and download the Raspad image. It's about 6.6 .6 gigabytes, so give it a little bit of time. Once downloaded, I'm going to go ahead and right-click the file and go ahead and extract it using 7-zip. Although you don't necessarily have to do this, the Raspberry Pi imager will allow you to simply select the zip file. With the image extracted, we'll load up Raspberry Pi imager and click Choose OS. There are a number of operating systems you can select and install to your micro SD card, including Raspberry Pi OS, and the imager will both download and install the image to your micro SD card. However, in this case, we want to write the image that we just downloaded. For that, we'll move down to Use Custom and select our image and click Open. Then we'll choose our micro SD card, which in this case is a 128 gigabyte micro SD, and then simply click the Write button to write the image. It'll ask us if we're sure, we'll click yes, and the image will be installed. Once it's written, just click the continue button and close out of Raspberry Pi Imager. Now that we have Raspad OS written to our micro SD, we'll pop it into the Raspad itself. Just like so. I'm going to go ahead and remove the screen cover. Then press and hold the power button until you see the LEDs turn on. It takes about 8 seconds or so. At this point, the operating system will begin to boot, and you'll have a pre-setup image with many of the features the Raspad provides. For example, you can easily rotate the screen, and the display will adjust automatically. If you didn't install the GPIO cable through the slot there, you can also use it as a stand. I've heard some mention that the fan is too loud, but I didn't encounter that as an issue.
There are a number of applications pre-installed. For example, if I switch over to Office, you can launch LibreOffice Writer and use it to type in a note of some sort. In this case, I'll pop up the keyboard by clicking the icon in the upper right and then just type in something and adjust the font size. Very cool. If you close it out, it'll resize the display. So yeah, that's pretty cool. I've loaded Chromium, the web browser, and went to wagnerstechtalk.com, and yeah, it browses just fine. I also downloaded a number of Magpie magazines, which I highly recommend if you've never seen it. Lots of great information and project ideas spanning all the Raspberry Pi models. Another thing you can do, of course, is to pinch and zoom, and that works very well. And with the three provided USB ports, if you want to plug in a dongle or a USB keyboard of some type, like this RE i4 mini Bluetooth keyboard, you certainly can. I also found that the stand I used for my Fire 10 tablet works perfectly with this device. All you have to do is adjust it up, and the Raspad 3 just sits on it perfectly. Check that out. I'll leave a link down below if you're interested. All the applications seem to work very well, and the touchscreen was very responsive. Even with this calculator and the very small buttons, I didn't have any problem entering the numbers. If you enjoy tinkering with electronics, you can easily add a GPIO cable and breadboard. Then, using Scratch, Python, or your favorite programming language, you can do some amazing things. Given that this is a Raspberry Pi, you can easily install many different operating systems such as Raspberry Pi OS, Twister OS, Ubuntu, and many more. We'll start with Pi OS. On the Raspad website, you'll find all the instructions you need to set up the keyboard, screen rotation. It's very easy to do, and I'll show you how. I installed a fresh copy of Pi OS and connected it to my network, then plugged in a keyboard and mouse, then go into Preferences and launch Raspberry Pi Configuration, and then select the Interfaces tab and go ahead and enable SSH. I'll use PuTTY to connect to the Pi so I can easily show you the steps from my PC. You can of course open a terminal on the Pi and do all of this without remote connecting. I'll start by installing the virtual keyboard, simply copy and paste each of the commands into the terminal session. Now we'll do the same for the right click on the Raspad. Again, just copy and paste each of the commands into the terminal. Towards the end, you will need to modify the rc.local file and add a single line. So I'm just going to paste that in right here. Then press Ctrl X to save, Y to yes, and Enter to save the file. Now I'll type in sudo reboot and go ahead and reboot the Raspberry Pi. And the last piece we'll install is the screen rotation service. So again, we'll just log in as we did previously and then just copy each of the commands and run them inside this terminal session. Once done, press Y and the machine will reboot. Now we'll move back to the Raspberry Pi and go to Preferences and Onboard Settings. Here you can customize the look and operation of the keyboard. There are also options for adjusting the transparency. It is very configurable, so definitely spend some time exploring the settings. As an example, let's go back into LibreOffice Writer and you'll see the keyboard popping up. Notice it did so automatically. I didn't have to do anything special. After you're done typing into a text field, address bar, etc., you can configure the keyboard to auto-hide, which makes this a very nice user experience. Of course, we need to make sure the screen rotation service is working properly, and yes it is. Now let's flip it back horizontal, and there we go. I already went through the setup steps for Twister OS, which happens to be my personal favorite OS for the Raspberry Pi. Here I'll load up PhotoGimp, and we'll see how responsive the touch screen is for drawing on the screen. Works very well. <laughs> I configured the keyboard a little bit differently under Twister OS just to show you a couple of different ways the keyboard can be configured. So we'll go ahead and go back into LibreOffice Writer and the keyboard will pop up. And you'll notice it's more transparent here, and there's also suggestions up at the top. Also, on the right-hand side, there is a small icon which will allow you to easily move the keyboard up and down. And you can see how it's transparent as it's moving up and down over the document. Twister OS also has RetroPie pre-installed, so let's check it out with a few games. Here's one I used to sink a lot of quarters into when I was a youngster. That's Galaxian.
And now we'll look at Super Mario Brothers on the NES. Plays great. And lastly, for a retro pie example, we'll check out Tekken 3 on the PlayStation. You can also install the screen rotation service in Ubuntu. And while it works, it's not as responsive as it is in PyOS and Twister OS. Now let's take a quick look at other ways you can use the Raspad 3. Retro gaming is likely one of the most popular use cases for the Raspad 3. Check out my setup guide for RetroPie, Recallbox, and Botocera at the link below. You can also extend or mirror the display using a full-size HDMI cable and turn your Raspad into a nice desktop computer. When it comes to 3D printing, yes, you can even use the Raspad 3 with your 3D printer. In this case, I'm using a FlashForge Creator Pro and have the Raspad 3 connected via a USB cable to the back of the 3D printer with OctoPrint software installed. This allows me to easily monitor a 3D print and remotely access a print job. Another fun use case for the Raspad 3 is to use it for robotics programming. In this case, I used it with a microbit based robot, and I have a detailed guide and video at wagnerstechtalk.com forward slash McQueen Plus. There are a lot of great project ideas available on their website. One that looks particularly interesting is using the Raspad as a home assistant. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see a follow-up video demonstrating how to set that up. That brings us to the end of another video. Let's talk about the things I like about the Raspad 3. First off, it's a very portable Raspberry Pi 4 solution. In fact, it's the most convenient Raspberry Pi 4 device I own at the present time. I really like the fact that it has a full-size HDMI port, which makes it easy to connect up to a TV or monitor. The auto screen rotation works decently well. The 10.1 inch touchscreen works great and is very accurate. There were no issues there. You also have access to all of your IO ports that you may need, so it makes it great for developers, hobbyists, retro gamers, or pretty much anyone. It was hard thinking of things that I didn't like about this unit. However, I would like to see an improved battery life. While I was able to leave it running for several hours, a lot of I.O. operations will begin to drain the battery, so keep that in mind. Lastly, they no longer include a printed manual in the package. I personally would have preferred to have a printed manual. I hope you enjoyed this video on the Raspad 3 and found it helpful. If you did, please click the like button. If you want to see more content like this in the future, please click the subscribe button. And with that, I hope to talk to you again very soon.